Hey makers this is Ruvin and in this episode I am going to talk about how we can create save as draft functionality in the canvas app so here I am on my machine and here I have this canvas app form over here you can see that at the bottom I have two buttons save as draft and submit when user click on save as draft it will just store whatever information that they have filled in over here but on the other hand when they came back basically they need to resume from where they left and let's say when they click on submit button it will fire all the validation and check for the required field as well so how we can implement this type of save as draft functionality in canvas app but before that if you haven't followed me on my twitter and instagram so far please do follow me because these are the platform where i'm uploading short content on power platform first of all let me show you the data structure of my onboarding table that i'm going to consume into this form so this is the different column i have here here i have created one dataverse column status onboarding which is a single line of text column for the status purpose where i will maintain the status draft and submit it now the table structure is fairly simple basically whatever field i have into this particular form all of those fields i have created in the backend database now let's start by creating this particular form from scratch so here i have created my blank new canvas application let me connect my data source first so i am simply clicking here and connecting my onboarding table my table has been created successfully now let me take one scrollable screen over here so i am clicking on new screen template and scrollable screen over here let me just remove this unwanted canvas from here so this is how it looks like let me change the title over here as onboarding let me go to the theme and let me change the theme color as green so it looks nicer now here i want to create my form control so simply click on insert and search for the edit form i added this control on my screen and now let's add the fields which we want inside our form so i'm simply clicking on edit button over here and providing the data source first as onboarding let's add the different fields over here by default name and created on is added let me remove this created on from here and let me add some other fields like email i need my phone number also i need postal code job title emergency contact number and i need resume let me just add couple of fields over here so i added different fields over here and now let me provide a functionality of save as draft along with submit button so let's add two buttons over here so let's search for the button so i have added two buttons on my screen let me rename my buttons so i have provided my first button name as save as draft and second button name as submit button now let me go to screen 1 and let me create one navigation screen as well because from where i wanted to open this form so let me add one vertical gallery over here so let's add vertical gallery and over here what i want here is simply layout as let me select title subtitle and body so it looks like this and let me select the data source as onboarding table so it is showing all the existing records over here now let me just add this kind of header as well so let me just copy and paste the exact same thing from the screen and let me make this header and let me make this as a my onboardings all right let me just arrange this gallery in a little bit and let me add one new button as well for creating a new form so let me add one add button so i am just adding one add icon over here on my screen now let's maintain two variables to initialize our form control for new form initialization i am just creating one variable set variable my form mode and let's just define the code as defaults and inside that the name of the data source this will tell my form that this is something which i need to consider as a new form perfect makes sense after that let's navigate to the second screen navigate screen 2 
and also I want to reset my form as well. So before this entire code, let me use a command reset form and provide the ID of the form, form1. So my new button code is ready. Alright, now same thing I need to do on the edit button as well. So let's say for an example, if I'm selecting this item, I want to tell my form that I have selected this specific item. So for that, I'm simply selecting my so I'm simply writing the on select event of the gallery and let's define the variable set variable my form mode and in that my form mode I'm just providing a value as gallery selected item. So this is my gallery's ID gallery one. Let's pick that up and provide it over here gallery one dot selected finish the bracket and after that let's navigate ourselves to the second screen screen two all good. And now let's try to test this out. Copy this particular variable from here and let's click on new button. So when we click on the new button, it is showing like this. Now select that particular form control and go to the item property of the form. Over here, we will provide the same form mode over here. So we just provided that. Now let's test it one more time. So let's say whenever I'm selecting any particular item from here, like Gemini, it will show me the records over here in this fashion all right and and same way when i click on new button it will showing the blank form to me over here right now let's do a code for a save as draft and submit button but before that let me just add here the back button as well so i am just simply searching for the back button so I just added that and let me change the color of this particular back button. Let's write a code back. Perfect. And now let's just write a code for save as draft functionality. So in save as draft function, we will simply use one patch function patch. In patch, we will provide the name of the data source, which is your onboarding data source. Then here we need to provide whether my record is new or update. And for that we have already maintained our variable over here in the item code, which is my variable form mode. So this variable tell me whether this record is a new record or old record, because during the new time over here, we initialize as a default, which is considered as a new one. And during edit time, basically we have considered this as a uh, gallery one dot selected, which means that that is an edit record. Let's go again here and let's write a code variable form mode. And after that, we need to update the record. So over here we have form control. So form control, whenever we have that in the patch function, we can directly provide form dot updates. So form one dot updates that will save all the fields that are available at the form control. All right. And with that, I want to maintain my status as a draft. So I'm just writing one curly braces over here and let's provide the column name that we have created here, like onboarding status, status onboarding, and let's provide its value as draft over here. So I'm just providing draft because here we are just storing that as a draft. Simply click on done and we are all good. Perfect. Now, what we want to do here is we want to achieve one more functionality like when someone click on submit button at the same time uh, this form should be submitted and with that status should be set as submitted all right so for that we can use exact same formula and go here and apply it so onboarding variable form mode dot updates and over here the status will be completed so we are done with that now the question arises that like let's say for an example whenever we have a save as draft functionality at that time uh, i don't want to make this email phone number and postal code as a required column but on the other hand when someone click on submit it should validate those field as well so how can we manage that so for that simply click on the submit button and maintain one variable for the validation so here i am just creating one update context variable update context and let me provide the name of the variable as variable is required 
and let's provide its value as true. Finish the bracket and let's format our code. So the code looks like this. So I am making this field as a required field. Same way, I need to copy the same expression over here. Let me click on save as draft and during save as draft, this will be false. Okay, so let's click on false over here. Simple and let's format the code as well over here. Okay, so this is my save as draft button code. Now, simply copy this variable and select the required property of the form control. So I'm going here and going to the required property. Let's unblock our card first. So I'm unblocking this, this and this. And then select each individual data card and go to the required and paste the same variable. Variable is required. Go over here and go to the required field and make it that variable over here. Same way for postal code as well. Make it required and provide that variable. Perfect. Sounds good. So now let's test this out. So let me just provide here the name test01. Alright. And after that, what I wanted to do here is simply when we do save as draft, after that, I want to notify user as well. Notify record saved successfully. And let's provide notification type dot success. And I want to redirect myself to the first screen. So I will use navigate function here. Navigate screen one. Perfect. Done. Let's format the code so it will look like this. All right. Same way when someone click on submit form at that time as well, I want to do that. But before that, I want to validate my form over here. Okay. So when I make my field required after that, I need to check if my form is valid or not. And for that, we will simply use a power FX expression. If form dot valid forms ID, which is form one, form one dot valid if it is valid then i wanted to do this patch expression otherwise i simply want to fire the validation so i will use submit form and in submit form i will provide forms id this will basically trigger my required fill validation and show me the error messages all right and let's finish the bracket so it will look like this let's format the text so this is how it looks like and if it is valid it do the patch operation and then it will navigate to the first screen as well screen one perfect so this is how the code looks like for the submit button now let's test this out so over here i am just here let me just go back here so let's start from scratch let me do test zero one okay and save as draft. So I redirected here, test 01. I'm clicking here. So it is showing me this one. And after that, now let me click on submit button. So you can see that it fired the validation and make this fields required. Now I need to fill this information. If I go back and come back here again, you can see that it is still showing the validation. So to avoid that, let's do one thing on the top on visible of this screen let's make this variable variable required by default as false on visible so on visible and let me make this as false okay let me just go back come again looks fine clicking on submit firing validation going back coming back proper perfect all right and now let's add the value a at the rate gmail.com phone number you can add anything over here postal code as well add anything job title and then emergency contact number as well and now when you click on submit it will perfectly stored in the table and if i open that up it is showing like this so this is how you can create save as draft functionality in power apps so what we simply did here is on the new button we initialized our form mode as a new mode. Okay. And same way on the edit button over here, I mean, galleries on select, we just stored the current item over here. And in forms item event, we just provided that what is the 
item of this one and based on that it is making that decision whether i need to create a new item or update an existing item also this is the code for save as draft and this is the code for the submit button all right so this is how you can simply create save as draft functionality in canvas app hope this video helps you and values your time if so hit thumbs up and subscribe my channel Looking for any training or paid consultation? The website link is available on the channel cover homepage. And don't forget to follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. With this, this is Dhruveen signing off. See you in the next session with some amazing content. Till then, have a great day. Goodbye.